been watching a few ride videos lately. One of the interesting things that I always see on some of these videos is like a, a data overlay that'll show you things like how fast the board's going, how much power it's outputting, where it is, that, that kind of thing. The thing I noticed though was that there's a variety of ways of that people use to do it. None of them are particularly great. Some people record the, the VESC mobile app screen or the flow control mobile app screen and then use that as a video to overlay on top of their ride footage. Others will actually use a tool that's designed for cyclists for example uh, which is kind of a neat workaround because it will also include power output and temperature and those sort of things as well but it won't go into some of the more detailed fields that we actually record when we use the VESC. Things like motor temperature, MOSFET temperature, accelerations, pitch, orientation, yaw, all those kind of things aren't going to come through in something that's related to, related to cycling. So after, after thinking about it for a while, it's kind of like, well, how hard can it be to like make a little tool that would actually do that for my videos? And I started working away at something that was just going to be for my own use, but then it sort of got to the point where it's kind of like, well, actually, this may be useful for other people as well. So this video is really just a, a quick little tutorial on how to use Esk Log Video, which is the name of the tool I've made. And it's not really just for one wheels, it's for anything with a VESC. So it could be an e-foil, an electric surfboard, definitely an electric skateboard, and even all these VESC one wheels that are getting around now. So on to the tutorial. Hope you enjoy. Um, yeah, get into it tutorial you're going to need two files. One is a VESC log file which is one of these CSV files. Have a look at its contents. It doesn't have to be a VESC log file. It can also be a log file recorded by Metra or Float Control will, will also work. And I'll, if there's any other file formats that need to be supported, uh, drop a GitHub issue in there and I'll have a look at it at some stage. Then there's of course the, the ride footage itself. Uh, which is just a video file that you record when you when you go for a ride. Then you're going to need to come down here and open up a web browser. The app itself is called Esclog Video. It's a browser-based application. It's 100% JavaScript. There's no backend associated with it. So what that means is you don't need to install anything and none of the data you, you open up in this application actually gets sent anywhere. It's all done in your browser window. So to load up the log file, we simply select it over here and drag it into the file open area. And it'll go through and replace the, the default data with your actual real data that this has been loaded from that file. We can then go through and start to specify how we actually want this to look. So speed, for example, we're probably not interested in seeing meters per second, so we can switch this over to kilometers an hour. And maybe one, we want to display it as a dial display instead of the, the standard label. And let's, let's move it up. So let's put it above the, the actual position, little, little map widget that's there. We've got the power display there too. That's, that's all right, we'll, we'll keep that because it's interesting. In fact, we might also add in another power data series as well. So you can add in the same data series twice. You'll see it is showing the same data, but you can choose to display it differently. So in this case, I'm going to say, all right, let's show it as a spark line, which is this squiggly little graph. I don't need the label there again, so I can get rid of that like such. And that's starting to look all right. One of the other series I like to include in here is the orientation, uh, which is down the bottom here. And this little display widget will sort of show, in the case of one wheels, the, the roll and, and pitch of, of your board. It's really only useful for one wheels. It's, it's not something you're gonna to wanna to put on your, on your Escape videos, for example. You've got a bunch of options here when it, when it comes to colors, so you can get pretty creative as, as far as what color scheme you go for and create something fairly obnoxious. Or what I might do is just settle for like a, a nice plain black and white. So once we've gone through and created our basic layout, it's then just a simple matter of clicking this create video button. And you'll see this progress bar is gonna start ticking over and it's, it's gonna go from zero to a hundred twice actually. The first, first time through it's rendering each one of the frames of this animation. The second time the progress bar ticks through, it's taking each one of those frames and 
compressing it into an MP4 file, which is the actual video file output of this. So we're going to leave this run for a while. It's actually pretty slow. So that actually took about five, a little bit over five minutes to generate the video for about a five minute log file. So if you've got an hour long log file, it's probably going to take about an hour for it to go through the rendering process. But it will download one of these video files once it's complete. I'm going to take this and drag it over into my working folder. And we can have a look at this video file. So Esquad video will only generate a video of the data that you want to visualize. The role of actually compositing this on top of your right footage is, some, is going to be done by something else. And this something else in my case is Blender. But you could probably use any video editing software that you'd like. It just so happens that Blender does a pretty decent job and it's free as well, which is a bit of a bonus. It's also quite complicated. So let's skip over everything here and go straight to video editing. And we get what we see here is the visual sequence editor, which is the Blender component for editing videos. Going to make the window a little bit smaller so I can see my files. And to start off with, we're going to take the right footage and just drag it into the bottom bottom channel down here. We'll make sure it's at the actual start of the video. If you've done video editing before, this is probably going to look pretty familiar. And now we're also going to take the video generated by Esclog Video as well, and just drag this in as well. And just in case you couldn't guess what was going to happen, the, the issue that we have here is that the two videos aren't synced up. So we've got the data video, which started at some point, the, the same time as when I clicked record log on my phone. And then we have the video, which was started sometime afterwards. So there's a few different ways you could go about trying to sync these up. I think the easiest way would be if you're using a, like an external video camera, you could actually record yourself touching the, the play button or the record button when you, were, when you were starting to record the log. In my case, that's not possible because I'm recording video on my phone and also recording logs on the same phone. So instead, I'm going to look at this orientation because it's going to level out when I get started on the, on the board. So if we sort of scroll this through, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the moment in the video that I level out the board. So we're about to climb on it, about to put the foot down and we're off. So the board's level there. Now what I need to do is make sure that this overlay video lines up with the same time in that video. So I'm going to drag this across. It doesn't look like it's moving at the moment, but it is. You can sort of see, so if we take this moment here, you can sort of see how I'm dragging the video across. And that's about where the board is level. So now the two video feeds are lined up. So we can actually go back to the start. We might actually, let's fix up the positioning of this video for, for starters. All right, so we go over here, transform is what we're after. And let's say we want to make the scale one. So that means one pixel is in the overlay video is one pixel in the, in the rendered video. And I'm gonna move it over to the side as well. So let's, Zoom it over here. That looks about right. And we'll move it up to the top corner as well, about there. So that's neatly out of the way now. So if I click this play button, we should see the video being synced up so that when I step down and level out the board, you'll see it level out on the orientation over here as well. So that's good. One thing we need to make sure we do in Blender is by default, you only get to render the first 250 frames. So there's a lot more than 250 frames in this video. So I'm going to bump up the end to say, let's let's go with like 10,000. So now when we click play, it'll actually like play through more of the video instead of just the first 250 frames like such. So that's enough of that. And you could actually go up here and do render render animation and it would output a video of this of this right footage but there's one thing i sort of skipped over that like there's nothing wrong with this display at the moment but 
one of the things I wanted to do is sort of make this data display sort of blend in with the background a bit more and not take up quite so much screen real estate. So in order to do that, we'll go back to Esquad video and we'll switch over to this mask tab. Don't worry about the colors too much. What this is, is basically a black and white image that will tell Blender which bits should be opaque and which bits should be transparent. So white is opaque, black is transparent. So let's save this mask image. We'll drag it into our working folder as well. And we'll go black back to Blender. And now we're going to drag this into the video sequence editor as well. You can see it's not positioned correctly, so we need to make sure the transformation is the same as our video file. I can't remember what position, so we can 798 and 160. So now you can see it's directly on top of the data overlay video. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. We need to select the underlying data overlay video here, change to the modifiers tab on the side. And what we want to do is add a mask modifier. So that's added in and now we need to select the mask PNG image. Nothing's changed at this stage because this mask file is still, the image is still on top of the video file. So what we need to do is make sure we select the ELB mask layer, change back to strip, and I'm going to, to mute that image. And now you can sort of see how the, how the transparent background sort of shows through the masked off areas now. You can do some other little tweaks like go back over here and we might wanna drop the opacity down a little bit just so the, the rest of it's a little bit transparent and sort of looks a bit more blended in as well. So that's pretty much it. From here on, you'd just go render, render animation, and it would start rendering every frame of this video uh, to whatever output folder you specify. That's it for this video. I hope you find Esquog video useful, I guess. Um, drop me a message if it's missing something or broken. Otherwise, good luck.